All right, viewer change settings. Data channels. First off. Does it matter which um, folder you're selecting in this protocol? Uh, I started just for this exercise with alert. It depends if you want to have the exact thing or not. It's up to you. Data channels, number of channels, one, sample rate 256. This, if you notice, is a summary of what we see when we click the button. Okay? That makes sense? Now, as I'm looking at this window, let's start from the top. Data channels, EEG channels, one, two, four, NIRHEG, PIRHEG, or temp. So right now, this particular exercise, we're simply doing a one channel. Okay. As we go over to the right, we see the software digital filter order. Realize the lower the number, the faster the filter. The higher the order, it's more selective. Where are you at? Data channels. Say that one too. Right, but inside the box, you were saying the lower the number. Software digital filter order. Okay. So the lower the digital filter order, the faster, the more, the poppier the filter is, the more forgiving the filter is. Okay. The higher order filter is going to be a little slower, but it's much more selective. Okay. And tomorrow, when Tom goes through the. Um, foundations and neural feedback technical foundations you're going to get a, a more in-depth explanation of what exactly does that mean to your training okay it is recommended when you have somebody who's a beginner or a, a child or something when you're starting out to use a lower order filter it'll be easier for them to get the hang of it because it's more forgiving okay once they get the hang of it you can bump the filter order up and then the frequencies have to be more exact for them to get credit. You're saying it's going to be more forgiving for the kid because it's going to accept more artifact and jiggling around, right? No, I don't want to say that it has anything to really do with artifact as much as when you set a, a filter from, let's say, 4 to 7, mm -hmm. it's going to take a little 3, it's going to take a little 8. They don't have to make that exact filter because the skirt's very loose on the filter. Okay, so it's, it's literally it's giving them, yeah, it's okay. giving them extra credit. Okay. Yeah. Basically, yes. It's a one channel, two channel, or four channel. Now, with one channel, how many electrodes do you need? Three. Three. Active, reference, ground. With two channels with our product, how many electrodes do you need? Five. five. Why is it five and not six? It's common ground. Okay. When you go to four, you can do it a couple different ways. You could do it where you have actually ten electrodes, so if you have two separate two-channel yokes, or you can do what's called linked ears and end up with seven electrodes, where you're actually linking the references. So it does get a little more, a little trickier with four channels, because you have a couple other options you can do. Okay? Sure. You had mentioned that um, with a child, you might start with um, a lower filter and then change it. Mm -hmm. it Well, usually you're going to have to take in consideration usually the amplitude of, let's say, a specific filter 4 to 7 for theta. When you go from, for instance, a third order and then to jump up to a sixth order, normally you're going to see some amplitude change and it's going to be a little lower because you're getting rid of that 3 and you're getting rid of that 8, so you have less energy in that range. Okay, I don't know an exact like equation to tell you what percentage of change you should see. You could interpret that as clinical improvement. Perhaps you definitely have to be aware if you've made a change. Yeah. Usually the change, you're not going to make it in the folder itself. It might be the second go around for like the next protocol that you do with them. Mm -hmm. So you kind of get them introduced, uh -huh. you start them, they get through 10 or 20 sessions, then you start a new folder with maybe some tweaked protocol, right. and then you might bump that filter order. But you may never change it. 
Okay. Some people don't change it. Some equipment doesn't even give you the option to change it. The reason we put that in there is because some people that were coming from like neural cybernetics, they use a second order filter. Mm. Some people that are coming from Lexicore, I think they used a fourth or a sixth. Mm. So we wanted to give you the capability of having the look and feel of equipment you've been used to. And you've got it defaulted at six. Is that sort of just because it's right in the middle of the range? Or is that what's um, commonly utilized and recommended? It's one of those things since a lot of our focus right now is Z-score training. With the Z-score training, having the filter order a little higher and knowing that the, the filter's a little more selective, and since you're comparing it to a normative database, it makes more sense not to be so sloppy, like the filter not to be so loose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are these zero-based uh, filters? We'll have to ask Tom that. We wouldn't go over three. Now we have to ask Tom. I'm not sure. <coughs> so, Bill, uh, Z score. I know you're not going to say specifically, but it should be above six. I don't want to say above six. The default is six. You may not need to change it, but we'll ask Tom. Maybe it. Sh maybe it should be at three. I haven't heard that, but I'm not sure. Okay. Well, we're not there yet. <laughs> Some channel mode, on and off. Off, the default, on, it's a completely different mode. If you accidentally turn it on, what you're going to find out is that channel one display you're used to seeing for raw wave is no longer simply channel one. Now all of a sudden that display is, is a representation of channel one plus channel two. Okay. Yeah, we're at some channel mode. Default is off. The only time that you'd go on is if you specifically want it on and you want to do some channel mode. Yes? So even though we've checked one, you still would get a sum of one? <coughs> no. Okay. Because you wouldn't have electrodes on. It's only, that's a great question, it's only applicable for two and four channel training. Some channel mode. Just same thing with like coherence and phase training. You can't do coherence and phase or asymmetry with one channel. You need at least two or four. Okay, because you're comparing it to the other channel. <coughs> when we turn this on, we have, with four channels, we have another um, question to answer. Do we want to split the sum channel mode or do we want to combine it? Think of the difference between split and combine is combine is channel one plus channel two plus channel three plus channel four versus split is one plus two and then three plus four. Okay. If we're only one channel, if we're using one channel, it really doesn't matter what we put here. Correct. Yeah, at all. Okay. And one channel means it doesn't matter. It's off. The, f the four channel sum mode never matters unless you're in four channel mode and the sum channel is on. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, it, you know, it would be really great if it was grayed out unless it was applicable with a little more time down the road when you know priorities lessen for other features we'll get some of these little things taken care of where only if it's on four channels and some channels on does the actual four channel some mode even appear but it's just not a priority right now okay everybody clear with that <coughs>